Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I actually just got back yesterday uh, from the final two Elite Series events of the season, Lake Oahe and La Crosse, Wisconsin over on the upper Mississippi River. Um, wrapped up the season, awesome tournaments, had two good events, uh, one really good event, one decent event. Uh, wrapped up the season in second in Angler of the Year. We'll talk more about that in the next video. Um, but what I want to do in this video is talk about the Lake Oahe tournament, uh, kind of my background on Lake Oahe. I have been there once before, my strategy going into this event, how I caught them, um, and all that good stuff. So this is the Lake Oahe recap. Y'all stay tuned. All right, guys, so let's jump right into it. Um, you know, Lake Oahe is, is kind of the one on the schedule this year that I think everybody kind of circled as an unknown a little bit. Uh, we fished there once before back in 2018. Uh, and in that event, we went out of Pierre, South Dakota, which was uh, about, I'm going to say, I don't know, maybe 80 miles, 70 or 80 miles south uh, of where we put in this time in Mobridge, South Dakota. A uh, long ways from my house, obviously 19 hours from my house in Tennessee. Um, and, and Lake Oahe is known really as a fantastic walleye fishery. It's like a world-class walleye fishery, but it's a really good smallmouth fishery as well. Um, you know, so we were definitely excited to get there. Uh, I didn't have a good tournament there in 2018, but I feel like I'm a lot better fisherman, a lot more well-rounded fisherman now uh, at least I hope so, um, now than I was in 2018. So I was excited to get there. It's always fun to go new places, places where you don't have a ton of experience. Um, and I was definitely excited to get there. Now the way Lake Oahe sets up, it's a huge body of water, like the third or fourth biggest body of water, uh, I think in the whole country. It's a, it's a huge lake, 300 and something thousand acres, uh, roughly 300 miles long. It's on the Missouri River. Uh, just a massive body of water. When you, when you look at it from the land, it doesn't really look that big. And when you pull it up on a map, it doesn't look that big. But when you get out there, man, you're, you're looking at a point and you think, oh, it's just a couple hundred yards over there and it takes you five minutes to run over there. It's actually a mile or two away. It's, it's, a, it's a crazy place. But the predominant pattern there, I knew there might be some fish caught shallow, but really the only thing that those fish have to get on in that lake um, they're very bait oriented. There's some herring and, and shad and stuff in that lake. And then there are big long points that run out into that lake. And what I found in practice was those fish were using the ends of those points. Now, here's something that's real important, I think, that, uh, that I kind of unlocked and it kind of saved the tournament for me. The first two days of, of practice for the Lake Oahe event, uh, I practiced in three different sections of that lake. Now, every time you go to a massive body of water like that during your practice time, spend your time in different sections of the lake unless you find a section that you really, really like, and then you can try to kind of hone in on it. But the first two days, I knew I didn't find what I needed to find. So the third day, I went to look at a, at a different section of the lake and immediately things started happening. And I knew this, I narrowed it down to like a 10 mile section of the lake where I knew it was gonna go down at. And sure enough, it, it absolutely did. That particular section had the right points that stuck out at the right depths. They had little clusters of rock out on the end of them. Uh, I wasn't seeing a ton of other boat traffic. A lot, you know, a lot of the, the guys that ended up doing well in the tournament were fishing that same section of the lake, but I did not know that at the time. Um, so day three of practice had a really good day. Could have had uh, probably 20 to 22 pounds that last day of practice. It was, it was really phenomenal. And it really opened my eyes to the kind of fishery uh, that that place really is. Uh, so I, I felt good about it going into the tournament. Uh, what I wanna do right now is I wanna roll through some footage of how I caught some of these fish. Um, you can see my Lowrance active target was a big, big player, much like uh, the Lake Ontario tournament. Um, it, I would get out there and I had my active target set out to 80 feet. I'd see a lot of these fish and I'd actually pitch to them with either a drop shot or a Ned rig and I'll take you through those setups. But I want to throw, show you some of these fish catches. 
uh, let you see kind of the lay of the land a little bit, how I was setting up on these fish and kind of what I was looking for. So let's roll through a few, few of my fish catches right here, and then I'll take you guys through the two setups that I caught the most of my fish on. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed those fish catches. I know that's a big part of these videos, and that's what every video that I watch on YouTube, I want to see somebody catching some bass. So that's definitely why I throw those in there. But uh, I do want to take you through a couple of setups that I used. The drop shot setup you guys have seen before, it really won't be anything new. Uh, but I want to take you through my Ned Rig setup because I do set up a Ned Rig a little bit different than I do my drop shot as far as the rod and the line setup. Uh, so let's talk about that a little bit. We'll do the drop shot first. Um, for my drop shot setup, it was basically the same setup that I used over on the St. Lawrence River at Lake Ontario. 
uh, 3 8 ounce Mustad tungsten drop shot weight, size 4 Mustad Titan X Wacky Nico hook. Uh, that's the Maxent Flatworm, the 3.6 inch model. Solid black was a big key for me. You know, with smallmouth, um, you always want to figure out the, the color. They're very color oriented. Um, and it seemed like for me in this event, they really wanted that solid black. I don't know if it's got something to do with what they were feeding on, uh, the bottom, you know, a lot of times the, you want to contrast that bottom composition, whatever you're fishing, but solid black seemed to be a big key. That's what they bit the best. So that's what I threw, uh, that flatworm in solid black, uh, 10 pound vicious, no fade braid, eight pound vicious pro elite fluorocarbon leader tied with an FG knot and my six foot 10 medium uh, must add instinct spinning rod. Uh, perfect drop shot setup. I love that setup. Like I said, I've caught a ton of smallmouth on that setup. Works really, really well. Now, on my Ned Rig setup, there were a few of those fish that they were, they were roaming around on the bottom. Um, you know, a lot of times they'd be setting up off the bottom. You'd see them setting six, eight feet up off the bottom. Uh, even some of these fish, they'd be out in like 25 feet of water and they're setting 10 feet under the surface. They were very bait oriented. Um, and a lot of times I feel like, uh, you know, on a fishery that doesn't get as much pressure, uh, pressure really gets to those fish. Uh, and like I said earlier, a lot of the a lot of the guys really those points were the only thing that we had to fish so even though this was a huge body of water a lot of us guys were fishing a lot of the same stuff so i wanted to do something just a little bit different uh and that difference for me was a ned rig sometimes um i just feel like it's a different look it's more natural than a drop shot is in my opinion uh because when a fish sees a drop shot you know coming to them down in the water column and they're following it down to the bottom they see that weight and then they see that bait and sometimes i think it kind of spooks them a little bit uh with a ned rig everything's together so i think it looks a little more natural it just makes sense to me um in my mind the ned rig that i threw was actually a 3 16 ounce mustad grip pin ned head uh it's got a really good mustad hook in it it's got a little grip pin on the shank so that that bait stays up there really well one tip I will give you guys, you don't have to do this, but if you want to take your Ned Rig game to the next level, put a little drop of super glue right there where that, that bait meets that head, uh, and you'll be able to catch 30 to 40 fish on one Ned Rig. I mean, it's absolutely amazing what one little dab of super glue will do. Like I said, you don't have to have it. Uh, this does have a keeper on the shank, and it'll hold it up there, but that super glue, it'll save you a lot of time and save you a lot of baits as well. Uh, that is actually the Z-Man. The Finesse TRD, that color is called New Money. These fish were definitely feeding on crawfish some, so that's why I went with that color. It's got a little bit of orange flake in it, got a little bit of green flake in it. Now, for my setup on it, I threw it on my six foot 10 medium light, must add instinct, uh, signature series rod. I like the medium light for a Ned rig because I throw it on lighter line. Now, my line setup, I threw seven pound vicious, the regular braid, seven pound, and you might ask, why would you throw seven pound as a, opposed to 10 pound? That seven pound casts a lot further than the 10 pound does. I could cast that Ned rig 100, 120 feet with no problem, probably even further, um, you know, with that seven pound line. So, uh, plus I think it lets it get to the bottom just a little bit quicker. Uh, I threw six pound vicious pro elite fluorocarbon leader, uh, just trying to tone it down. You know, this is this is about as finesse as I can possibly get with that little Ned rig. So that's why I went to that medium light. Uh, really cool setup and caught a lot of my key fish on that. Ended up finishing this event, uh, I believe it was 37th place, somewhere around in there. I, I had barely made uh, that day three cut. I was the last guy in. Um, but, you know, anytime you're fishing on a Saturday on the Elite Series, you're making money. Um, and you're, uh, you're having a pretty darn good event. So, you know, all in all, a good event, a good event, mid thirties finish. I'm happy with it. Lake Oahe is a fun lake, uh, chock full of smallmouth. It did not show out to its true potential this week, but still a good event. Um, I hope y'all learned a little something. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. So remember all of this stuff right here, rod, reel, line setup, uh, jig heads, hooks, drop shot weights, everything. You can find it all midwayusa.com. Thank those guys 
for their support of Brandon Lester Fishing. It's been an awesome year. Uh, we'll be doing the recap at La Crosse real soon, and it won't be long. We'll be ready to chase them crappie again. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time right here, Brandon Lester Fishing.